Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 5.30 in the morning here on Friday, January the 7th, and I'm happy to be here. This is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com, and I'm just putting up the chat room now, and I'm going to pop the link in there to, to finish looking at the article that we left off on yesterday. That's Post Abuse Vulnerabilities from Catherine Patricelli on the website uh, www.mentalhelp.net. And it's really, there's some good information on there. I hope everybody will go take a look at it. There's lots and lots of articles on there regarding um, child abuse and domestic violence and adult survivor issues and whatnot like that. It's, it's a mentalhelp.net. And, um, you know, I find that it's a pretty good resource. There's lots and lots of info there. I hope people will check it out. So that's what we're going to finish looking at here today. And uh, I'm not a counselor or a therapist. I'm just a private citizen paying to do my shows. And I say this on every show, and that's just in case somebody new tunes into it. It's very important to me that people know this. Um, you know, I'm just a private citizen paying to do my shows, and I'm a survivor of child abuse. And I just wanted people to um, to know that, you know, I'm just on here because I wanted to be another voice. I just wanted to... to um, be a voice to say, you know, you're not alone, you know, if you're a survivor of child abuse or abuse and, you know, to make sure you get some help and reach out, you know, and um, just take care of yourself and, you know, just for some support and also to speak out against child abuse. So that's why I'm doing these shows. And um, so you have to listen at your own discretion because everything I talk about has, deals with abuse and uh, it's, a, it's a very sensitive and touchy subject. And I think, you know, depending on where you're at, if you're a survivor in your healing journey, you know, it can be very stressful to listen to the topics about abuse. And so, you, you know, you want to be very, very careful so that you don't get, you know, you aren't triggered. And, um, you know, it's just really important for you to, to know, you know, kind of what you are okay listening to and what you're not okay listening to. And all of my shows are very sensitive because I really talk about the issues of abuse and I don't sugarcoat it. I just tell it like it is. I don't minimize it and I just, you know, I'm just kind of bringing awareness out and, and and really trying to educate the public on on what is abuse and really what what happens to people when they are abused. So it's important for me to, you know, to say this every show because I think, you know, you never know when somebody's going to tune in for the first time and not realize that, you know, they have to listen at their own discretion and also, you know, I'm discussing a very sensitive sub- subject, right? So so you listen at your own discretion. Make sure it's something that you're comfortable listening to. That is your discretion. Young people under the age of 18, I ask that you have permission to listen to my show, and that's because I really care about children, and I think that uh, children have the right to protection at all times. And so if you're under the age of 18 or you know, 18 or younger, you need to make sure that you have someone listen to the show and make sure it's okay for you to listen to it, and all because I really believe that uh, you know children's lives are worth saving. There's a whole lot of sick people out there who are, you know, child sexual predators, pedophiles, who are online, you know, trying to get a hold of children at all times. And when there's a chat room present, you really need to be careful. And you need to know how to keep yourself safe. And since there's a chat room present here, you know, I always mention this because I want young people to know that, you know, they need to know how to keep themselves safe in this situation online, right? And also because my shows are dealing with a lot of mature content. And so young people, have somebody okay it and give you permission that you can listen to this show, okay? Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. We'll get right into this article here, and I'm going to pop the link into the chat room. We're going to finish it up. There's very not, not very much left of it, actually. Um, this is uh, Post-Abuse Vulnerabilities by Catherine Patricelli, and um, she posted this stuff a long time ago. This was back um, a few years ago, but the information is still good. So I'm going to pop the link in there, and then we'll continue looking at it. I think the information's quite relevant, you know, I mean, it, not, none of the real information really changes as far as the stats and statistics do, but but not the uh, educational portion of, of these websites. Um, the information's good, and so um, so I just popped the link into the chat room there, so you're all, you can all sort of take a look at that if you'd like. Um, and thanks for being here, my good friend Gypsy Witch is here, thanks very much for, for being here with me, I appreciate it. Um, let's see, this was posted December 15th, 2005 by Catherine Patricelli. Uh, post-abuse vulnerability. So, you know, it's written a few years ago, but it doesn't really matter because the information is really good. She was talking, to, we've been looking at all week, really, subclinical abuse sequelae, which she says, you know, not not, not all, um, you know, survivors of child abuse and, and victims of abuse develop diagnosable mental health or medical disorders. So she says the majority of abuse survivors will end up with less severe outcomes that might be best described as subclinical, which means, for example, not sufficient to meet criteria for a disorder, post-abuse issues, right? So so 
that's what we've been taking a look at and just reading through. These issues may include, and we talked about, you know, difficulty developing or sustaining healthy, long-term intimate relations and relationships, sexual dysfunction or discomfort with sexual intimacy, low self-esteem, a tendency towards self-blame, um, and all kinds of stuff there. And that's a whole issue. Not everyone who's been, who, you know, who has, is a survivor of child abuse or, or domestic violence and whatnot would have these issues, but some people do. And just because somebody has low self-esteem doesn't mean they've been abused, right? Um, lots of people have low self-esteem and they were not abused. So it just, it's just that they've done the studies, they've done enough studies to notice just how many survivors of, of abuse and um, survivors of child abuse and domestic violence and whatnot who have these issues because of the abuse, right? Or on 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 top of the abuse, right? Maybe it was something that, you know, that would have happened anyway, but it's just the fact that the abuse just makes it that much more worse, you know what I mean? Um, so we were taking a look at some of this stuff and suicidal thoughts, disordered eating habits, problems with alcohol or illicit drugs and promiscuity we were talking about yesterday, uh, troubling memories about past abuse, moments of disassociation or disassociation where you mentally space out for a while, she says. Difficulty trusting others, chronic pain in specific parts of your body. That's where we left off yesterday, so that's where I want to pick up. And, you know, not everybody who has chronic pain was abused, right? That's all there is to it. But some people who have been abused do end up with chronic pain in specific parts of the body, right? And then there's a whole issue of body memories. Um, you know, it's, it's you know, survivors of physical abuse or, or sexual abuse, you know, they... They can sometimes have body memories. I know that I do. And that's just because I have chronic pain in parts of my body where, you know, I know in particular associated with what happened to me as a child. And that's because I know exactly where it hurts and where where the physical abuse took place. So I know it's like, okay, that's the damage done. And, um, you know, it's it's harsh having, you know, having to deal with chronic pain. I actually know all kinds of survivors of child abuse, who adult survivors, who I, I know lots because of what I do. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, and you know we work all the time, like like as many hours as we possibly can, volunteering right with Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. We're all volunteers, and we work, you know, around, really as long as we can, as, as as hard as we can, even though we have to sleep and we have to eat, and we have to get other things done. Um, some of us hold down full time jobs, some of us don't. But we're working to, you know, promote education and awareness, um, you know, regarding the issues of, of child abuse, right, and so, and child abuse prevention, right. It's very important to us that we're trying to stop child abuse, right. So um, we're researching all the time, and and you know we run into people, and and we have lots and lots of supporters, and I I have lots and lots of friends who are survivors of child abuse, who are, are advocating against child abuse, right. And that's why they're doing what they're doing. So um, you know it's. Uh, I've had the opportunity, which has been awesome, to run into a whole lot of people because of what I'm doing who are survivors of child abuse right, and domestic violence. And so, you know, it's it, it's hard uh, for people who I know some of these survivors, I'm not going to mention names, obviously, um, that, you know, it's hard for them. I, I hear some, some of these friends of mine, survivors of child abuse, talking about the chronic pain that they suffer, fibromyalgia and, and all kinds of chronic pain because of the abuse, right? And so I can totally relate to that. And I see, you know what I mean? Like I know myself, I suffer with that. Uh, some of the chronic pain I have is from car accidents that I had when I was a teenager. Um, but, but I know where some of it came from that was prior to the car accidents. So that's the whole issue. But it's kind of, you know, it's hard for people. Not everybody who has chronic pain will have been abused, you know what I mean? But there are a lot of people who have survived different types of abuse who do have chronic pain because of the abuse, right? So it's hard on people, extremely hard on, on all of us, you know what I mean? It's very sad. And um, another issue that's you know can be a problem for survivors of child abuse is she talks about here, uh, this Catherine Patricelli on this website says, self-inflicted harm, such as cutting or burning yourself. And that's, you know, that's harsh, um, you know, self-injury. Right, self injury, self cutting, and whatnot. Um, I've done a little bit of, you know, looking into that because I was one of these types that really wanted to self injure and wanted to self harm uh, as an adult survivor of child abuse. But I'd, I would always stop myself. You know what I mean? Which is great, and I'm glad that I could do that. But I actually know lots and lots of people, unfortunately, sadly enough, who actually do self injure, and you know, they do it for very specific reasons. And they were abused, whether it's as a child or in domestic violence situations. And so it's one way, you know, that survivors of abuse sometimes handle, um, 
you know, the the pain really left over from the abuse, right? The emotional and, and psychological damage done is like. So I actually I did shows on this a while back. I forget how many. I don't know. It might have been in the summertime or something. I mean, I've done like 520 shows or something like that. Um, you know, we were kind of looking at that self injury and and um, you know self sabotage, right? Really was taking a look at that and. Um, it you know people do that for many reasons sometimes they do it because they feel too much and so they want to they just can't they just want to let people know what they're feeling in their heart because they're in so much pain that was my case you know i want i had so much anger and rage and pain in my heart from what had happened to my family and to me um that i wanted to self injure to show people the pain in my heart but some people do that because they actually can't feel and so you know because of the 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 intense I guess the intense pain of being abused, right? Um, it sort of caused them to kind of shut down, right? It's and, and can happen, and then you know they feel like, well, if I, I need to self injure or I need to cut or whatever, just to feel something, right? And so it's a harsh situation for people. And I, you know, I know there's great websites out there with info um, regarding self injury. So if anybody wants any resources that I have, you know, just leave, drop me a message here in the you know, on Blog Talk Radio or Facebook or whatnot. And if I can help you find anything, I certainly will. Um, I, I've, I've studied through it, looked through it, um, read through all the info that I could find on self-injury and cutting and stuff like that because um, not only was I wanting to do that four years ago, but I, I know people who are doing it right now. And I wanted to learn how, you know, how to approach it, right? Because for certain, you know, people, you know, they need to be able to do that. And I think that what, when someone actually goes into um, what I've heard from like psychiatrists and whatnot and psychologists, psychiatrists mainly, therapists and counselors, they said that generally people that do that just need to to you know get some help with it and find that there's other ways to cope. You know, you can substitute something else for that. You don't have to cut or self injure or burn yourself or hurt yourself. You can. Um, Get some help with it and learn and find something else that works just as well. But I know some of the some of the things that were discussed in some of these websites. There's a great website called Child Abuse Survivor Monument. If anybody hasn't seen that, that is such an awesome website. It's Michael C. Irving. He's a psychotherapist and he's a he's a sculptor. He's up he lives up here in Canada, and he is um, a survivor. Michael C. Irving. He's got a website and he, it's an awesome website. Child Abuse Survivor Monument, and the website is um, it's it, it's really basically based on this child abuse survivor monument here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada that was put up quite a few years ago now. But a lot, you know, he 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 himself and I don't know how many survivors of child abuse actually made this monument by, you know, hand prints and poetry and all this stuff and it's just awesome. I hope everybody will go check it out. Just type into your browser um Michael C Irving, I R V I N G or you can type in child abuse Survivor Monument, and that'll bring it up. It'll bring you right to that website. There's all kinds of great info on there about child abuse and and survivor stuff, right? Because he's a psychotherapist, right? And he has all kinds of coping lists on there. And there's tons and tons of info um, about coping and 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 how to help yourself if you're having a hard time coping. And you you know, it just gives people some other ideas, like you know, for instance, people who are who are cutting because of abuse, you know, and and just the whole situation of being abused. Some people do cut, and you know, they said that. You know what you can do instead is rubber bands. Try snapping rubber bands around your instead put rubber bands around your wrist and snap those instead of cutting, right? Because the effects are the same. They said that the the effects are quite similar, so that's what they were saying. And that that website is awesome, and I hope everybody will go check it out. But there is some really good info on there for people you know who are having a hard time coping and really don't know. There's there's coping lists and he helps you kind of he walks you through on the website on how to develop your own coping list and i we went through all this man a long time ago um i don't know maybe last winter probably you know a year ago probably um so you know you'd have to you know i i would just recommend you go and 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 go to that website and check it out there's some great info there so that's an issue self-inflicted harm you know mainly what i was doing was self-sabotaging my own uh, life because i was just self self-sabotaging in ways like quitting jobs uh, someone would say something to me that I didn't like, and of course, instead of dealing with the confrontation, and because I just didn't like confrontation, and I still have a problem. I, I'm okay with confrontation now. I'm better off than I ever was because I've had to deal with a lot of stuff and, and work through a lot of things. But I used to be extremely horrible at confrontation, um, and just didn't like it, you know. And so if I got in trouble at work or something happened and I didn't appreciate what my boss would say or something, instead of dealing with it and handling it, I would just quit. I'd be like, that's it. Okay, I'm done. Bye-bye. So I would leave jobs, really good jobs, um, 
because I just didn't want to deal with the uh, the meeting, the, the 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 confrontation that needed to happen in order for me to feel good about my job and about myself. And I've learned over the years, thank God, you know what I mean, um, to work through this stuff. But it has taken me some time for sure. And um, you know, it's it's hard, right? Uh, and so it, you know, I was kind of doing some work on that, and I had a um, uh, like a life coach at one job who actually kind of helped me to see what I was doing. I didn't even realize I was self-sabotaging until this one life coach actually pointed it out and said, well, you know, you're really only hurting yourself when you're quitting jobs like that and you're, you know, because you don't want to deal with confrontation because really, honestly, you know, if you're a good worker and you have rights and you need to stand, you, you know, because I did tell her I was abused as a child and that's why, you know, I have issues with confrontation and, and uh, you know, certain issues, right? And she was like, no, you you, you really deserve um, to get some uh, reconciliation out of this. You know, you don't, you shouldn't have to quit your job just because somebody, you know, because you've done something wrong or you feel that the boss is mad or, or whatever, right? Um, so she did. She walked through this with me, but then within 15 minutes, she had me pegged as somebody who was self-sabotaging. And I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. And I had to really take a look at my behaviors and think, you know, I guess a lot of it really was stemming from the abuse that I suffered as a child and the violence, you know, with just being part of this violent, you know, upbringing and just not wanting to deal with co- confrontation in my home was abuse, right? There was no such thing as talking things out in my home. Uh, you know what I mean? Nobody sat down and talked anything out. It was abuse or it was nothing, you know what I mean? So that's, uh, I really never learned how to um, how to properly deal with things as far as confrontation went. So I'm working through that, which is great. I still have work to do, but I'm still, I'm quite a bit further ahead than I ever was, you know what I mean? And that's good, and I hope that everybody else will do that too. That's the whole issue, right? I mean, we certainly deserve better. We certainly deserve to have a good life and not self-sabotage and not self-injure, not, you know, hurting ourselves just because we were hurt. I mean, that's I was at the, that point four years ago, you know what I mean? I talk about this a lot on my show, and it's because it was really such a, it was a time for me that I actually realized what I was doing, you know, four and a half years ago, which is really four years ago in like two months, um, that I was sitting there thinking I just wanted to self-injure, and I wanted to um, be out of the pain, you know what I mean? I was just, my heart was in such pain, and because I hadn't, I hadn't really dealt with anything. You know what I mean? Hadn't dealt with my feelings on on being abused as a child. And, you know, at the age of 41, I finally made a commitment to myself that I would start to learn to love myself and I would um, have a good life and I would allow myself to live, you know, and allow myself to have this good life that I really deserve and I knew I deserved. I was like, man, I did not deserve all that. Neither did you and neither does anybody, right? Nobody deserves to be treated that way and, and abused and and you know, so many people sadly are like, you know, and that's the sad part. And of course, we have to pick up the pieces, right? And so, you know, four and a half, you know, a little over four years ago, I mean, I made a commitment to myself that I was going to stick this out and I was going to win this fight. <laughs> and I was like, when I was, once I made a commitment, I was like, that's it. It's a done deal. I am sticking it out. I'm going to get well. I'm going to be happy. I mean, of course, there's going to be hard days ahead. And there has been some extremely hard days ahead uh, uh, since then. You know what I mean? Because it's not an easy road. And it's not an easy thing that we have to deal with, and that's the whole issue. But that's why I'm here just to say whatever, you know, that's why I'm doing these shows, really, because I just wanted to say, look, you know, whatever you have to do to, you know, to get that help, right? You know, if you don't really trust a counselor or therapist, you can always try something else. So try group support, like online group support, especially if you don't really like the the whole idea of going to see a counselor or therapist. You know, I, that's what I did. I, I did group support, online group support. And really it was mainly because it was convenient and I could remain, um, um, I could go on when I wanted to and talk to people when I had time because I'm extremely busy. And so I don't have a whole lot of time to be doing, like, running around to meetings and doing things because I'm already involved in way too many things. And so... For my own peace of mind, I just thought, hey, group support, online group support is a way for me because it allows me to be part of a community that, you know, of people like-minded people who have been through sort of the same situations or some of the similar situations that I have and understand how hard it is and understand, you know, um, just just how serious it is. I wanted some validation. I wanted to talk to people who are, you know, who had been through some things like myself who who could understand the pain involved, you know what I mean? And so, you know, it was awesome. I really liked that online group support stuff. So if you ever need a, a suggestion on, you know, a couple that I know about that are that I thought were pretty good, um, you know, be sure and let me know. I know the ASCA has online group support. That's the Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. And, you know, so they host meetings in certain cities, but not in North America. I don't know about around the world. I'm not sure about, I think they do in Australia too, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think they do in Australia as well. There's a group in Australia that's, 
really connected to the ASCA here in North America. That's Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. So that's a great uh, website if anybody wants to check that out, um, www.ascasupport.org. Um, um, I think that's what it is, Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. And they have um, a workbook on there called Survivor to Thriver. That's a great workbook. But you have to be, you know, you have to really read through there at the beginning where they talk about, you know, are you safe enough to do this book? I think the first 30-something pages are about safety first. And that's very important because you have to be in a safe enough place to do that work by yourself. And they actually suggest that you don't do the workbook by yourself, um, even though you can if you're stable enough and you're handling things well enough that you that you know you're not going to self-injure or hurt somebody or whatever. But if, you, if you're not sure, it's better not to do those things on your own. Um, have somebody with you who, you know, who you care about, who you, um, who you trust. You know what I mean? Who who's proven themselves trustworthy? That's the thing. You got to be kind of careful. Um, you know, I would be careful who I would let into my survivor journey, right? <laughs> because people are hurtful, and they can, you know, there's always a potential that somebody can hurt somebody. And so, you know, you have to know that you can trust these people with your information, right? And that you know, this person would have to be there for you and be like, man, I would like to help, and I want to be part of this, and whatever I can do, you know. And if you know somebody who's trustworthy, then you know, you could help have them help you go through the book, but they just suggest that you read that safety first chapter. That's all that on um, that Survivor to Thriver workbook, but it's great. And um, yeah, thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it. I got I got some guests here in the in the chat room. I've got um, I've got Gypsy Witch here and 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 Ginny. Um, I'm you know there's there's people popping in here. Thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it very much. Um, and hopefully you know you're getting something out of this show. I know I am. I, this particular um, topic is very interesting, you know, because it's something I kind of relate to a lot of it. I don't relate to all of it, but I do relate to a lot of it. Um, involvement in a relationship as an adult with someone who abuses you—that's the next one, and um, that Catherine Patricelli is talking about here. And <clears throat> excuse me, that's something that's so serious. You know, when people are abused as children, and then they go on to as an adult, you know, um, be re-victimized, right? Uh, end up with an abusive partner, you know, whether it's a man or a woman, doesn't matter. Um, and it's it's harsh when people like that's what happened to my mom. My mom was abused as a child, and um, and then married this man who was abusive, right? So that's my dad, right? And so she did that, right? She and she didn't know at the time she was marrying an abusive man. I really don't think that she, you know, she said there were signs when they were dating and stuff, like back in like 1940 or whatever, or 35 or something. I don't know. They they were not 35, but at least by 1940. Um, 43 or something. My mom was uh, born in in 27. So, yeah, that would have been 20 years later, so 1947. So she said that, um, you know, there were signs that he was kind of a little bit uh, possessive and a little strange, but she didn't think much about it, right? And then when she got into this marriage, it just went downhill really quickly. <laughs> it didn't take long for it to go extremely bad. And so... You know, she was abused as a child, and they went into this marriage and wouldn't leave the marriage and just kept telling me, well, this is just our, my life. You know, all of her kids wanted her to get out and because she was my main abuser, but we all we all cared for her. We all cared about her, and, and we could see what was happening. We were like, Mom, you, you need to get out. You know, all of her children told her that, and she wouldn't listen because she was like, no, this is just my life. It's just the way it is. It's horrible. It's been horrible since day one. Of course, she took her anger out on me mainly and some of my siblings, right? Um, but, you know, the thing is, is you know, it's not right, and, and she should have got out, you know. Um, if you're in that situation and you're having a, you were abused as a child or, or suffered an abusive home, and then you go on to allow yourself to be abused as an adult, it's a, not a good thing. And a lot of people think, oh, well, it's just my life, it's the way it is. I've actually heard this from people before in my lifetime. I've heard people say that, that that's just the, that's just the path that, that uh, they have. They don't, you know, like, would they believe that they needed to change it because they deserve to have a good life no <clears throat> because so many times people think that they don't deserve to have a good life especially when the when they've been through the ringer you know like my mom she she really thought that that was just her lot in life and that you know that she just didn't deserve to have a good life because obviously everything bad happened to her and but that was her her attitude she never really tried to um work on her attitude and didn't you know it didn't matter that she had these seven children who loved her right i mean all of her kids loved her and you know it didn't matter she would she was hateful she was full of hatred right and she was um you know miserable because of the fact that she had just had this horrible life you know and that's very sad because she had the option she could have got out you know many years she she could have got out of, from that marriage and got herself some help and got some counseling or therapy or whatever she needed. She could have got some support, you know, and really had a good life, right? But it's unfortunate that she stuck around with my dad and and just thought, no, this is it. I'm in this for for life. And so many people do that, and it's very very sad, right? 
because at the end of the road, they have nobody to blame but themselves, honestly, because she really blamed us and took it all out on her kids and her husband, and, and, and really, she should have just got out. You know, all of the kids, the older siblings actually were going to pay for her to move out. They were like, no, we'll get you an apartment. We'll fix you up. We'll we'll do this and we'll do that. And she would have got support. You know, she would have got help for, you know, to help her out, right? Um, she was working. She could have, you know what I mean? She could have moved out. She could have got out and got out from that whole disgusting marriage, right? But it's like, no, she didn't want to get out. She just had this, it was this whole victim mentality of, oh, I'm just a victim and I've always been a victim. Of course, she was abusing all of her children, including mainly me. <laughs> and it's like, you know, no, she wasn't just a victim. She was also an abuser who was a victim, right? So she liked to play this victim card, right? Like, I'm a victim and my life sucks. And so, you know, and then she would hurt hurt me and hurt hurt her family, and then cry the blues. Well, look what you're doing. You're making my life miserable. So she blamed us, beat on us, abused us horrifically, especially me. And then, um, you know, and then made me be the brunt of the whole thing. And, of course, it was everybody else's fault, but it was her own. She would never take responsibility for her life, you know. And she would never take responsibility for her actions and for the way she would treat other people, right? And so, you know, that whole victim mentality thing doesn't work, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I until I realized you know, at the age of 41 that I was a survivor and not a victim. I had to change the way I was feeling. My mom taught me really well how to behave, and which was horrible because it was the worst behaviors a person could possibly have. You just don't want those those behaviors, you know, abusive garbage behaviors. So the whole thing is, is like, <clears throat> it is up to us, right? We have to make sure that we're not being abused as an adult. We, As children, there is not much you can do. You're stuck in these homes. You know, sometimes you get removed, sometimes you don't. We weren't removed. We were, we were left in the home, you know, by the... CPS, you know, um, sadly enough, they just didn't feel that our lives were being threatened, even though they were, but the whole issue is it didn't, you know, for some reason, we just kind of slipped through the cracks, uh, sadly enough, but the whole issue is, is that, you know, so many times people just, they think, well, you know, poor me, life will never change, but it is up to us as an adult to make sure that we know the boundaries, that we're not going to allow anybody to abuse us as an adult. I mean, I set my foot down, I put my foot down and I set boundaries and I said, no one will ever abuse me again, ever. So it's turned out great because every relationship that I have now is based on respect and based on on uh, this, you know, mutual trust that, you know, we're not going to hurt each other, right? And so my partner, I've been with, you know, my sweetheart for 50, over 15 years. I mean, um, you know, he's great because, I, I mean, I put my foot down. I said, you will not treat me. You will not abuse me. <laughs> and you will treat me right. Not that he had any intentions on it, but I just wanted to make sure. I mean, I told, you know, I'm, I talk about this in my book if anybody's interested in getting a hold of it. Um, uh, Life of Death, the Redemption. That's actually all proceeds are going to dream catchers for abused children. So I didn't want the money for that book. You know, I, I wanted that money to go to help stop child abuse, right, and to raise awareness and, and really promote education and whatnot. So I, that's why I, I wrote that book. And, um, and mainly because I... I I wanted to write it for my two brothers who went to their graves in, in, in shame and silence, and nobody knew what happened to them. And they just they looked at my brothers like they were just losers and used to say stuff like, "Oh, they were just losers," you know what I mean? And I was like, "No, no," because I know how they grew up, and I know I lived in the same home they did. So if I don't speak out, you know, that's pretty bad, you know. So I decided, okay, I'm going to speak up and speak out, right? But the whole thing is, is that we we as adults. You know, we are ultimately responsible for our lives now. As children, we couldn't really help what was happening to us. But now as an adult, if we we do have, and we if we don't take responsibility for that, then at the end of the road, you can't sit back at the age of 70 and say, oh, my life sucked and it was just horrible. Like, that's what my mom did. That's what my mom did, you know. On her deathbed, on her deathbed, she was just like, my life sucked and it was horrible. And I'm like, that was your responsibility, to get yourself some help and to get us some help. So then at the age of 41, I figured it out. It took me a long time to figure this out, that I was ultimately responsible for my own self and that I had to learn to love myself. And I had to, if I wanted to have a good life, it was going to have to be me to do it. And if I wanted to heal from this abuse and this garbage that was put on me as a child, I was going to have to do it. Nobody else was going to be able to do it for me. And you know, once I actually realized that, I, I changed from a victim to a survivor. I was like, oh, excellent, this is awesome, because now I'm a survivor, I'm no longer a victim, and I feel so much better, because I realize that the shame doesn't belong to me, you know, and all this pain that was in my heart was not my fault, right, but I need to learn how to how to walk through it and deal with it, right, so whatever way that you can, you know, I'm telling you, we got about a minute left, but if you need to see a counselor or therapist, whatever you decide that you need, you know, you, you need to do that, make sure that you do get some help and don't suffer with this in silence, you know, if you are having a hard time coping, you know what I mean? Like some people, you use your own discretion on that. But I'm just saying, 
reach out, you know, and um, and hey, if you, if if you're having a hard time and you can't cope, you know, then you call somebody, call a crisis line if you have to. If you can't get a hold of somebody, you know, then the next best next best bet, phone a, a crisis line, you know, to have somebody to talk to. You know, it's horrible that people just go through this stuff and and suffer on their own like that, and think that there's really no no options for them when there actually are. Uh, but sometimes we don't see those things. We don't see those options, right? So you know, reach out. Make sure you do stick it out. Get some help. You know, uh, you certainly didn't deserve that abuse. I know that. I know I didn't. And so you know, I'm glad to be here on this side of this, right? Uh, able to say, you know, that you know, not to ever give up, right? So that's my big message here, and that's what I'm always talking about. Um, never give up. Ever, because you certainly deserved a whole lot better. You do, uh, you do count. You do matter. And uh, I was not told that or shown that as a child, right? I was told that I should just die and that I deserved to die, and that I was this horrible, evil child, and you know um, that I was just worthless and useless and everything else, and beaten on and 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 sexually used. It's like you know, um, yeah, I was crushed. You know what I mean? In every way absolutely crushed and destroyed. And so, you know, at the age of 41, I thought, no way, I deserve, I deserved so much better. And why, and I have to learn how to love myself and I have to learn how to take care of myself. Nobody even showed me how to do that. So I was like, you know, okay, how am I going to do this? All right, one step at a time. But, you know, you have to make sure you stick it out and never, ever give up, right? That's my big message. So have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll be back on tonight on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio as well as my show. And so you can check my show page and whatnot. And uh, and uh, I just wish you a really good day and hope that everything, you know, goes well for you. Just uh, if you need something, get a hold of me here on Blog Talk Radio or Facebook and I'll try to get back to you right away. And talk Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.